all of you uh, once again welcome to the morning teaching session of department of virology sawai man singh medical college uh, jaipur so today we have a teaching session on a step by step approach of hyperspadias repair we know hyperspadias is such a common problem almost occurring in 1 1 in 200 of the male population and uh, so today it would be presented by our resident dr mukesh and uh, it, the session would be moderated by our faculty dr prashant gupta and today we have uh, an expert faculty with us who has who has been working with uh, dr asopa who we all know is an internationally renowned hyperspadiologist so uh, welcome dr gg singhal to our teaching session i would just introduce dr singhal Uh, Dr. Singhal is a senior consultant uh, in general surgeon at Asupa Hospital, Agra. Uh, he has been uh, doing a lot of workshops on hyperspadias and stricture urethra throughout the length and breadth of our country. Uh, we know, we also remember that he was present in one of our workshops at uh, in Department of Urology, SMS, a few years back also. Uh, he has given so many lectures on stricture urethra and hyperspadias and reconstructive urology in the annual conferences of urological society of india since 2005 so welcome dr singhal uh, dr singhal is a very uh, astute surgeon along with uh, rather his main uh, focus is on hyperspadias so it is really fortunate for us that uh, we are having him in this teaching session uh, thanks for coming now i will stop sharing and i would request uh, dr prashant if you have joined please uh, take yes, over sir. and start the session yes thank you shivam sir on the behalf of sms medical college urology department i welcome you all i invite uh, dr mukesh our resident to start sharing his presentation mukesh yes sir start your presentation Good morning, teachers and residents. Today, I am presenting a seminar on step-by-step -step approach for hypospadias repair. First of classification of the hypospadia, as discussed in the <coughs> previous class, latest classification given in 2003 comprises glenular, distal, and proximal hypospadias on basis of the lo location of meatus. Next is GMS score comprises glance size, location of meatus, and cur curvature of shaft. if his score increases then the severity and chances of complication increase there there is three goal of hypospadias repair first is to provide ability to stand maturate and achieve sexual intercourse and third is effective insemination surgery for hypospadias is divided into two part straightening of the ventral curvature and urethroplasty first first of all <clears throat> correction of the ventral curvature also known as urethroplasty cause of ventral curvature may be shortening of soft skin dartos corpus spongiosum urethral plate and overlying tunica albuginea of the cover corpus cavernosa relative to dorsal surface also known as ventral cor corporal disproportion ventral curvature occur in 11% of primary distal cases and 30% of mid shaft and 81% of the proximal hypospadias Next is steps of the correction of ventral curvature. First of all, skin and dartos are degloss. Then release of if, if still cavity is present and release of corpus spongiosum along with the urethral plate from corpora cavernosa. And then artificial ere erection test is performed. In the artificial erection test, normal saline is injected into a single corpora using a 23 gauge butterfly needle until the erection is achieved after applying a ring at the base of penis curvature is measured by then curvature is measured by goniometer or taking capturing a photograph in mobile or ipad and after if it still curvature present then two method for correction of the ventral cavity dorsal shortening of procedure is applicable if curvature is less than 30 degree and if curvature is more than 30 degree then ventral corporal lengthening is used this is algorithm of management of penile closure as discussed in the previous class 
is also discussed in the previous class the like three method of the plications nesbit excision plication only plication henke mcluis plication and fourth is baskin midline dorsal plication and the ventral corporal length next is ventral corporal lengthening there is two method for ventral corporotomy a single ventral cor corporotomy can be made from 3 to 9 o'clock the area of the greatest at the area of the greatest bending and then opening in the tunica albuginae patch using a graft or flap as a graft we can use tunica vaginalis or dermal graft and then in the second matter several one to three full thickness incision in incision given into the tunica albuginae without grafting and incision through the tunica albuginae are not grafted and so urethroplasty can be placed directly over the or them and next is urethroplasty general principle for urethroplasty is better done over a size of at french catheter and it should be done in mul multiple layer and interpreted rather than the continuous sutures sutures lines should not overlie each other and if the suture and un under tension then more chances of failure and meatus should never be tied all hypospadias can be repaired using either of two operative techniques tip or two stage urethroplasty in for distal hypospadias repair tip urethroplasty is most commonly used alternative methods are magpie and methior flip technique or thrust duple repair first of all magpie procedure in the magpie procedure applicable to most cases of the anterior hypospadias without a cordy and a glenular coronal or distal location of the meatus with a mobile distal urethra is ideal for magpie operation in the mcp operation the circumferential subcoronal incision is given up about 5 mm proximal to meatus then penile shaft is degloved and a longitudinal incision is made and starting from dorsal aspect of the meatus and extending distally to the end of glenular groove and longitudinal incision sutured in a horizontal henke mcluis manner and then v shape incision is given over glans edges and glans tissue is approximated in the midline in two layers with interrupted absorber suture and reapproximation of the coverage finally the incidence of complication of macpai is 1 1.2 to 10% most common in complication in mitral stenosis and the mitral regression other is uc fistula and cordy mitral base flap method technique a single stage mitral base flap technique to repair distal form of hypospadias it is ideal this procedure ideal candidate for method operation should have a straight penis and procedure is ideal for distal shaft coronal and subcoronal hypospadias a wide glenular groove is very important in order to perform a successful method repair in method uh, distance between hypospadic uh, meatus and the tip of penis is measured and equal distance from the meatus is measured on the skin of the proximal penile shaft and marked a width of 7 to 8 mm is measured for the proximal flap and 5 to 6 mm at glenular end the incision along the mark uh, preparation and mobilize of the glenular wings then mitral flap is raised and flipped onto the urethral plate with running subcuticular sutures approximate with this flap to the lateral aspect of the urethral plate and then once the urethra is closed glenoplasty is performed and skin closed complication of method procedure is the fistula formation mitral stenosis structure and mitral retraction dehiscence of the glans suture a hair bearing urethra may be the most distressing complication of the method operation next is thrust duple repair of distal hypospadias a long longitudinal midline incision is made at 12 o'clock then incision is closed transversely in the henke mcluis fashion a subcoronal incision is made around the glans penis and incision is made dorsally incision is made dorsally laterally and ventrally around the meatus then artificial erection test is performed to check cordic erection the urethral plate is stabilized over the catheter using a running suture and glenular skin is approximated with horizontal mattress sutures using 70 polyglycolic 
so there, then finally skin is closed. In the TIP pro, pro, procedure given by Snodgrass in 1994, the most commonly performed procedure today, almost all cases of distal hypospadias and proximal hypospadias can be managed by this procedure. And most recent concept based on the recognition that the urethral plate is well vascularized tissue rather than the fibrous band. The principle of TIP repair is, is to relax the urethral plate using midline incision so that tubalization of the plate could be achieved without retention. The critical steps in this is midline incision of the urethral plate from meters to tip of the penis and all meters should be wide and oval and new urethra covered with the dartos fascia. In the TIP repair, <coughs> circumscribing incision is made approximately approximately 2 cm below the meters, then penis is deglowed up to the penoscrotal junction. As shown in the diagram first, if uh, circumcision is planned, then give incision shown in the diagram uh, A, and if uh, some prepucial planning for um, preserving prepucial, then incision should be incision given as shown in the diagram B. Incision along the junction of the uh, glands, wings, and the urethral plate and deglow. Deep midline incision of the urethral plate extending to the underlying corpora and the urethral plate and tubalization begins distally approximate 3 mm from the end of the plate and ensuring an oval not rounded meters. And dartos flap is dissected from the dorsal prepuce and soft skin and button hold and transpose ventrally to cover the new urethra. And glansplasty is begins distally, and 70 polygalactin suture is used to create the meatus at the desired location. It is done in one layer using interpreted subepithelial sutures and continuing down to the corona. And the soft skin closure for circumcision after excising the excess prepuce and approximate the inner prepucial closure ventrally. And the forked skin reconstruction performed in three layer using 70 polygalactin suture, inner prepuce, dartos, and then outer soft skin. Next is mid soft hypospray just repair. There is two options, TIP repair or, or only prepucial flap. Only excellent flap technique. In this technique, patients with hypospray is sufficient, uh, sufficiently severe to require substitution of urethroplasty. And the subcoronal incision encircles the glands and continues around the urethral plate. And penile skin is dropped back and the glenular wings are mobilized. And inner prepucial only flap with its pedicle is developed at and separated from the dorsal penile skin. And the suturing, then suturing the only flap to the urethral plate and incorporated generous bite of the spongiosum. And then glenoplasty is done and rota rotation medially of the mobilized glance wing is carried out with interrupted 6-0 polypedias suture and a second layer ensure a smooth approximation of the glance edge. Next is proximal hyperspedis. If the curvature is less than 30 degrees, then two options TIP repair and only prepucial flap. And if curvature is more than 30 degrees, then single stage tubular prepucial flap, two stage prepucial flap and um, graft repair. TIP indication for TIP is a proximal TIP urethroplasty can be done when there is a ventral curvature less than 30 degree and greater curvature prompt urethral blood transaction and preclose TIP repair. Circumscribing in, in this process, circumscribing incision is preserved urethral plate after degloving corpus spongiosum is dissected from the cavernosal body and released distal from the Glancing. At this point, artificial erection is performed and ventral curvature is straight, straightened. And midline urethral plate incision extended to the level of the corporal body. And when the incised plate is satisfactory, glance wings are dissected from the urethral plate and described for distal repair. Spongioplasty approximate divergent corpus spongiosum over the New urethra before the tunica vaginis barrier flap is added and glance plastic is done in one layer. Excess prepucial skin is excised to complete the circumcision and the ventral skin is closed, creating a median rare frame.
Next is BRCA2 stage free graft repair. It is done in two stages. In the first is inner prepucial free graft incision marked and harvested. And abnormal use of plate is excised and penis is degloved. An incision extended into the glands and mobilizing glands wing. A prepucial graft is secured into the place and compression dressing is sutured into the place over grafts. In the second stage, the second stage is performed at least six months later. A U shape incision is made and urethized to blaze. A protective dato slab is placed over the new urethra as a waterproofing layer. Then finally, um, glass plastic is performed and skin shaft is closed. And the next is two stage hypospheric repair bias flap. In the first stage, incisions are marked to allow degloving and mobilization of the ventral skin, and the penis is degloved to penoscotal junction. Any dysplastic or cordial tissue is removed, and artificial erection is per performed to assess the penile curvature. And either midline or parallel lateral glance incision is made in the glance, and glance wings are developed, and bias flaps are developed by in incising the dorsal inner prepucial skin in the midline to the mucosal color and yielding a pro proper skin dors dorsally. The redundant dorsal skin is transposed ventrally and secured balance. In the second stage, a USF thrust to play incision is made for tubalization and urethroplasty is performed either in a interrupted or running fashion using a two-layer technique and additional barrier layer with dartos or tunica visionaries can be per performed. Glance and soft skins are approximated. Uh, other one stage is Prox uh, proximal hypospheric repair procedures are tra transverse from prepucial Iceland flap or ducat tube and modified Asopa procedure and Koyanagi Nonomura one stage procedure. And follow up at the six uh, week and six month, urethral calibration is done at six month only the suggestive of obstruction. Next is complication of hypospheric uh, repair for risk factor are. Patients, as in if uh, hypothesis repair in elder age, then more chances of complication, meter location, pro, pro, in case of proximal lo location, more chances of complication, and reoperation of glands with less than 14 mm, no barrier flap, surgeon's learning curve. Most common complications is UC fistula, then metal stenosis and urethral structure, and glands, stations, derivative coulomb, belnatis, gerotica, obliterans, and recurrent penile curvature. As you see, is most common seen in 10% cases and most commonly developed at the original urethral meter site. And <clears throat> this is um, prevented by two layers of epithelial closure of new urethra and coverage with barrier flap, most commonly noted in the first few months of the surgery. Surgical repair of the fistula. First of all, distal urethra must be examined. For evidence of obstruction by cystoscopy, RG, or urethral calibration, if any obstruction is found to be corrected simultaneously with the fistula repair, and if the metal stenosis is also found, it um, metatomy should be performed. And the next step is to identify the site of the fistula and exclude any other fistula and excise the fistula tracts, then close up the urethral opening, and finally. Mm, flap coverage over the defect. For a small mm, fistula, simple transverse approximation of the healthy urethral tissue is, is often possible, and a running subcutical in, in our, inverting sutures of the 70 is used mm, to close the urethral edges. Mm, next, for surgical repair of the distal fistula, a circumferential incision is given around the fistula as shown in the diagram. And the tract is removed and healthy, healthy margins of the urethra are approximated in interrupted, uh, with interrupted sutures. After this, uh, the defect is covered by a penile skin graft, which may be raised nearby the fistula vertically, transverse or oblique in flap. Next is for repair of proximal or mid shaft fistula, as shown in diagram A, outline the outline of incision mark, then a epithelium is removed from all areas except the 
center plug that is to be used to resurface the urethra and then elevation of the dermal flap carrying the epidermal plug and the epidermal plug is sutured into the uro epithelium. And the dermal flap is sutured to subcutaneous tissue and the skin closure can be accomplished with in may with using flap or by simple straightening approximation. And next in modified clip, Cecil Kelp technique for fistula closure is, is performed in two stages. In the first stage one, the edges of the urethral fistula are approximated and close over, uh, over with the second layer. And the dartos layer is approximated, uh, approximated lateral to the urethra and providing a third layer to coverage. And the skin edges of the penile and the scrotal incisions are approximated. In stage two, a skin between penis and scrotum is separated and covered as shown in diagram B. And next, uh, complication glass dehiscence, uh, complete separation of glands wing with or without bands of the skin bridging and re uh, TIP or inlay grafting is used to repair this um, repair glands dehiscence. And the metal stenosis is diagnosed when the neometrics is less than eight friends in a boy with voiding symptom for management of this metal in the early post period uh, option is metal dilatation. If it refractory, it's still refractory to dilation, then next option is dorsal midline metatomy or um, redo metoplasty. If um, metal stenosis that is nearly obliterate the opening or it is the result of the BX changes. Next complication, new urethral structure. Diagnosis can be suspected by inability to pass urine and can also be diagnosed with RGU and MC. Cystoscopy is needed for confirmation. In the treatment option, if, uh, one attempt of uh, DVIU, and then the urethral plate tubalization or only repetitive flap. In the presence of excessive scarring tissue with the uh, stricture, the best approach in two stages of procedure popularized by BRCA and all the scarred ventral tissue, including the urethra, is excised back to the normal urethra. And then a buccal mucosal graft is laid on the raw area and secured with a tie over dressing. Approximately six months later, the graft is tubalized and the results, in, both in the functional and cosmetic term, is very satisfactory. And for the short structure of the glenular or penile urethra, there will be usually sufficient skin available to raise a local pedicle skin flap and lay it into the ventral inside urethra. If the, if the stricture is long or if there is an insufficient genital skin, free graft will be required. The stricture is laid open along the ventral wall. Its ventral wall and the graft is laid into the urethra. And other method is the penis is degloved and site of the urethra, urethra structure identified and mobilized. Urethra is then urethra is opened longitudinally and urethrotomy is performed on dorsal wall of the urethra and this produces a dorsal defect down to the corpora and BMG is laid into the disc. There is more than little chances of necrosis because supply is blood supply is taking from corporal bodies. Next one is diverticulum, most often noted after tubalized prepucial flap repair, rarely seen after tubalization and the urethral plate or buccal graft. And the contributing factors are distal obstruction, turbulent urinary flow, and ability to ability of tissue to use for urethroplasty to expand. And the surgical uh, calibration is done to detect associated distal stenosis repaired by excising redundant diverticular tissue or urethral closure and the multi-layered reinforcement before the skin closure. A for example, a wording cystogram showing a large diverticulum of anterior urethra in a four-year-old boy who underwent to blaze Iceland plep urethroplasty at the age of the one year, as uh, shown in diagram B and C uh, through a sagittal incision, ventral penile as on the ventral penile as aspect, the diverticular wall are isolated and spread in the center plane. And at um, French catheter is positioned to rule out the meatal or distal urethral stenosis. And the excision of the diverticulum and duplex urethroplasty are carried out with a double layer covering of periurethral and subcutaneous tissue. And a distal urethral stent may be left in place for two to three days 
post operatively using a soft uh, silicone adherence catheter fixed to glance to avoid fistula. Uh, thank, thank you, Mukesh. You. Yes, Prashant, go ahead. Thank you, Mukesh, for the wonderful elaborative presentation. Now I open uh, the platform for discussion. Uh, uh, Dr. Singhal, please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, Dr. Nimesh, uh, Mr. Nimesh, please unmute Dr. Singhal, please. Yes, sir. Please unmute Dr. Singhal. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Singhal. Uh, so, uh, we, we would request your comments uh, and on the presentation plus uh, whatever you wish to uh, tell about that trip, uh, tips and tricks on this uh, hyperspedious repair. Please go ahead. Yeah, okay. The first of all, my bird for magpie. The magpie should be done less than 1% cases because we have the patient, very less patient, few patients who are the our reservation, the, those who are having only coronal hypospedias with the soft skin, soft and supple skin. So magpie should be reserved. Otherwise, there is failure for the magpie. So magpie procedure is strictly done up to the uh, coronal uh, hypospediac meters. Then second, the anterior hypospedias or uh, uh, say uh, hypospedias which are not having the cordy or minimum cordy, they should be treated by the minimum cordy that is less than 30 degree. They should be treated by, as uh, he has narrated, the things they are, uh, it's not grass procedure, it's not graft, means the raw area when the plate uh, is less uh, width. That is our reservation for the it's not grass procedure. The urethral plate must be more than 6 mm in a child. But if the plate is less, then the raw area after creating the incision in the midline of the urethral plate should be supplied with the free graft either from the penile genital skin or from the buccal. And then the neurethra is created. The other uh, choice of procedure, they include the flip flap, Matthews, or uh, uh, the prepucial only technique. So prepucial only technique is best technique for the anterior hypospedias without any uh, curvature that can be extended up to the proximal region, proximal penile hypospedias, the only patch when there is no cordy because the prepucial width is very good, prepucial length, inner prepucial length is very good. So that can be extended up to the proximal penile hypospedias without any cordy. Then comes the uh, tubularization of the uh, urethral plate that is uh, that can be done for the patient who are having more uh, cordy that is more than 30 degree. They require transaction of the urethral plate and then the uh, patient should be treated with tubularized urethral plate by ASOPA technique or by uh, others technique. Uh, so uh, the suture line we should be placed uh, posteriorly means onto the ventrum and that should be covered with the dartos or any side of the any uh, type of the covering from the tunica etc. Tunica vaginalis so as to prove a, uh, provide a waterproofing. Then comes the more proximal hypospedias more proximal hypospedias with severe cordy. That can be done with uh, two stage repairs, means transection of the all scar tissue, all fibrous tissue, and that is supplied by either by the bias technique or Breca's technique by 
buccal mucosal flap. The uh, Breca only described the buccal mucosal uh, covering to the raw area. He is not using genital skin. So that can be done. The results are very good then, <clears throat> because it has uh, no redundancy. So the chances of uh, diverticulum formation, etc., is very minimum. Usually, the second stage is to be done after se uh, six months to 12 months, and they give a very good cover. Then, about the complication, the pro uh, distal fascia should be treated with the pro uh, if the fascia is a small pinpoint, then by using the uh, inverting suture circumscribing, as uh, uh, Mukesh has already de described, circumscribing the fistula, covered it with inverting sutures, and then good genital skin cover. If the fistula is ra a large or multiple, this should be communicated, and then uh, 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 proximal-based or distal-based flap as the availability of the skin should be covered and a uh, repair is to be done. If the, there is multiple fistula with recurrent cordy fibrosis, then the whole of the scar tissue <coughs> is excised and is covered with the buccal mucosal graft. If the patient is tobacco chewer in adult group, we also receive in our part the adult marriageable age patient, the patient is tobacco chewer, then it is a difficult or patient is having BXO. So these patients require a special treatment. Uh, we, we are using posterior pinna graft or graft from the non-hair bearing skin, like from the back, etc. So they give the good uh, thing in first stage. And then the second stage after six months to 12 months is done. So I think this is the summation of my, my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, summing up the whole uh, hyperspadius repair and what uh, is your preference in uh, these repairs and complications. So uh, I would just make a few comments on um, uh, Mukesh's presentation. Uh, one thing he said about the Matthews repair that one of the complication is uh, hair bearing urethra. See, in Matthews repair, when you do it for a distal hyperspadius, usually the skin uh, would not be uh, having hair. So that's not a very important complication for Matthews repair. So that I think we should not be. And another thing you said about the urethral plate is usually vascularized in almost all the patients, but uh, this usually we do not find practically. Many of our patients do have a fibrous kind of a urethral plate and not a very good urethral plate. So, uh, so, so they may, it may not be amenable to a kind of tubularization as in snodgrass uh, in many of such patients. Secondly, uh, I would request Dr. Single to uh, tell uh, exactly uh, which one you would prefer. Uh, like uh, if the urethral plate is less than six mm, as you said, you can put a graft in it and then tubularize it? Or would you like to put an only prepucial flap in uh, such patients? Uh, which uh, one would you prefer? Uh, Dr. Shivam, my preference is to provide only patch from the inner prepucial skin. See, the complication of the diverticular formation is most commonly seen in uh, more than 20 years or after race. But Surprisingly, the when you are using as a only patch, because it has inherent uh, spongial tissue, so I have never seen a diverticular formation in only patch repair. So my preference, well vascularized uh, inner prepucial overlay to provide a cover. So I think my preference is this. In about say. Uh, after 97 to 95, we did some uh, snort graft type of the repair, but they are uh, not very good because they have some tension repair. The key of the hyperspidase repair is 
not to give any tension suture. It should be loose enough to accommodate the appropriate uh, size of catheter. Right, right. All right. So, uh, diverticular formation is usually when we see in a tubularized urethral uh, uh, tube repair. So, only flap probably doesn't uh, create much of this diverticular complication. So, you said about the tubularized urethral flap because uh, we also used to do a lot of these tubularized urethral flap, but uh, studies uh, show that probably uh, these have more complications than doing a two stage repair as in BRCA's repair or other repairs. So uh, you, would you still prefer a tubularized urethral tube repair if you have to excise the urethral plate and make the urethroplasty? Still, see, I have already said, still we are doing tubularized uh, urethral plate repair from the inner pubescal skin for the patient who are having more cordy than 30 degree and who are having the good uh, inner prepuce. But we have, we did some little modification. The first modification, while forming the tube, we anchored at uh, about, say, half mm to uh, 8 mm uh, to the carpora. So it is not saggy. It is fixed to the uh, shaft. Yeah. Second, we denuded the little part of the uh, right hand side of the prepuce so they the this part because it goes posteriorly onto the uh, ventrum so it this part acts as a uh, free graft and provide more sticking to the uh, shaft so this also preventing the future uh, diverticular formation these are our modifications we did right right and one thing you said about the tobacco chairs, what we usually take, if you cannot take the buccal graft, we would take a labial or a lingual graft in some of these patients. And definitely post-auricular graft can also be taken. But labial and lingual are usually uh, devoid of uh, these uh, problems with tobacco chewing. So that also could be one of the options if you cannot take a buccal mucus. Yeah, that's we are also doing the same thing. Yeah, right. Thank you. So, uh, Nachiket, uh, any comments from your side and any other faculty member, any other viewer, any uh, query or comment, please, uh, most welcome. Thank you, sir. I uh, have a few questions that I would like to ask uh, Single, sir. Uh, single, sir, how do you decide? This is uh, very commonly asked by our boys also and uh, many times I've asked to uh, experts and uh, but I had never got a you know, type of a consistent reply. How do you dis decide what type and what size of tube you want to put inside a hyperspedius? Uh, I mean, whether you want to use a six French uh, infant feeding tube, eight French, 10 French. So my first question is this, and then I have multiple other questions that I want to ask. Uh, first of all, how do you decide the tube size, sir? Yeah, basically the tube size is not related to the age. Suppose you are making the tube uh, for eight French, then always it is not a, a snugly picking catheter you will uh, um, uh, provide the catheterization by six French. So always the catheter, the tube size, uh, less catheter size should be less than the tube size which you had made. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so, uh, so basically, yeah. so, sorry. So basically you can also make it six French, eight French, 10 French, but that depends upon uh, many factors, I mean, uh, about the size of the penis, the, the penis. urethra, yes. I mean, the condition of the urethra. So that is basically, you can also test chair French ka dala, art French ka, whatever you think is good, then you can uh, base your tube on that. So in adults also, you would put a, make an eight French tube? Uh, in adults, we are using only 10 French. Okay. Suppose 10 we French, make yes. a um, tube for about 14 French, but the catheter should not be tightly fitting. It is always a 10 French. That uh, purpose is uh, to drain the urine only. Yeah. So my second question to you would be, is that, uh, do you, when would you put an SPC or uh, do you usually, I've never seen SPC being put in a super hospital, but would, when would you uh, want to divert the urine in the form of an SPC? See, for any type of the proximal hypospedias, any short of maybe the perineal or something other, 
then uh, extended hyperspedias we never till date we never put any diversion right sir so my third question is uh, that uh, sometimes children have uh, you know uh, pericatheter leak bladder spasms and maybe on account of constipation you know when they go to the bathroom they have a pericatheter leak so in children what do you prefer in order to prevent this pericatheter leak what drugs do you use and what is your preference uh, and do you use anticholinergic or what nachi nachi this is a very common problem say about 30 to 40 degree in young children who are having the bladder spasm as well as the catheteric leak and constipation for constipation we are using some form of the laxative for bladder spasm we are using relaxatine in uh, say half milligram per day at the bed time so which one which okay. drug sir rolatidine rolatidine rolatin rolatin right solifenacid yeah. salt tolterodine sir i think tolterodine okay okay fine okay acha and uh, my last question is uh, for example when you are doing an adult hyperspedias uh, do you do you do you uh, give something special for erections like in a, would you like to uh, give in order to prevent erections do you believe that you know those medicines work for example some people give uh, uh, nazepam nothing. sometimes we nothing basically yes, in order to uh, decrease the tim sense or erections night erections see basically yeah. no drug if you require hormone uh, therapy then they, they they would need about two weeks time prior to start so basically we are using uh uh sedatives in mild okay. like uh, uh, sometimes we use this what we call as uh, terbutaline in doses of, for adult for 7.5 to uh, 10 mg at net, night time okay sir okay ha huh, because right. uh, you would not use any hormonal uh, preparation because as you said uh, it takes two weeks for uh, it to start correct. and become correct okay yeah. okay right, right sir perfect yeah. sir thank you so much sir you've yeah. uh, uh, sir and have taken care of many of my queries that i had and uh, it's always a pleasure thank you so much sir okay uh, yes uh, or two three more questions if the faculty or the resident has any query please uh, you are most welcome uh, go ahead in the meantime i would just uh, request a few uh, questions i have few queries one is uh, do you use ever this uh, testosterone uh, application or injection before doing hyperspadias uh so use of testosterone yes uh, about two doses or three doses if the patient is having very small phallus then we use testosterone uh, maybe 12.5 mg three doses at the interval of 3 weeks and the uh, last dose about 7 to 10 days before the uh, surgery the some said the literature said that some it definitely increase the vascularity but the on the same hand it increases the fistula formation also okay so that's a very important point brought out regarding testosterone so that is why the controversy is still there uh, secondly uh, uh, what type of dressing you usually make after the uh, repair is is um, it a compression dressing or you would you put the penis on the abdomen or you will keep it erect straight uh, what type of dressing you usually use Dr. Shivam, we are using simple circular light pressure dressings over the penis. We are not uh, uh, doing any other type of the dressing. Some they are using uh, place the penis over the abdomen, or some they are using elastoplast dressing. So we are using simple gauze light pressure dressing, and that will suffice. Perfectly. So uh, when do you usually? Uh, Uh, change the dressing after the repair initially we were changing the dressing after 5 days of surgery but for the last few years because some uh, we are even using the light pressure dressing first dressing be changed after 72 hours of the surgery and then after 5 days or 6 days interval okay 
when do you remove the catheter usually we remove the catheter in uh, say tubularize repair or other things for about 12 to 14 days but in cases of the like macpy repair we remove the catheter after 8 to 10 days so even with a snot grass repair uh, you use 8 to 10 days or 14 days it is 10 to 12 days 10 to so between 8 to 14 days you usually remove the tube yep. right right it was really nice to have you sir uh, we would definitely like uh, uh, to come sometime and watch your surgery is hypospadias to improve our skills also so thank you very much once again dr singhal for uh, coming in this session and i would request now dr prashant to give photo of thanks uh, and uh, wrap up the session yes. thank you dr singhal thank you sir thank you all faculty thank you singhal sir thank you thank you all thank you very much uh, and thank you all the viewers who might have joined us today on the zoom or on youtube uh, so a very good day ahead thank you very much thank you and have a good day sir good day